All right, guys. Here I am with Pikachu. Now it's Rory. But uh, really we're here and we're taking a look at this Nardi wheel and setup that I got from the junkyard. So I paid like 3,000 yen for this. Maybe that's like 25 bucks right now with the conversion rate. Um, not too bad. And the car that I got a, had been sitting in the sun for quite a while. Um, but even at 30 bucks, the hub is about the, the adapter, is the hub adapter that came with it is about 30 bucks new anyway. So at the end of the day, I got a pretty good deal. The biggest thing going on with the wheel was that it was weather cracked. Really, really, really freaking bad. The leather on the top of the wheel was like alligator skin. It had basically been sitting in the car for a long, long time. So I knew that was gonna be a challenge. I didn't wanna throw it in my car like that. I wanted to see if I could refinish it. So one of the things I was trying to do is I was trying to recover the leather that was on it. And what happened while I was doing that was it developed a hole. I don't know if you can see that right there it's a pretty gnarly hole so i don't know if it's real leather or not i think it is actually real leather um because it's pretty thick in the way the texture is so anyways uh that was a bummer so the next step was i ordered up some fabric and the stuff that i did my shift boot on um, with and my handbrake boot and i tried to make my own steering wheel wrap and how I wanted to do that was basically I, I cut it out, I sewed it up, but the problem is is that this material doesn't stretch. So you can see I've tried to put it on there in a couple different spots, but it's got, it's good up top. It looks actually really good up here. But the problem is that it just doesn't want to wrap around the material without wrinkling. So that's a fail in my book. I mean, I could throw it on there and it probably wouldn't look terribly decent um but at the end of the day i'm gonna have these little tiny wrinkles it's gonna bug me and it's gonna just bother me until i want to do it it right so it's a real nardy wheel so i really wanted to keep it i didn't want to pay like 150 bucks for another used one or something like that and the cool thing is, is it came with the real nardy button and uh if you've ever been in the market for a nardy wheel you know these are like 30 to 50 bucks just for the button itself um and that's the hub that came with just a an adapter so my idea for this is basically to take this leather that I have, and I don't know if any of you have ever heard of something called flocking, uh, but basically you cover whatever you want to do the flocking in and is in a glue, like an epoxy, and then you shake very fine, um, I think it's velvet, I'm not quite sure, but you, you shake very fine um, fibers on top of the glue and it'll stick to it and it creates a very uniform, very nice looking surface so what i want to do is i want to take this leather and i want to chop it up i want to shred it into like super tiny tiny pieces because i noticed when i was trying to refinish this that all that i was getting was a bunch of tiny tiny little leather fragments and i was thinking to myself why couldn't i just chop this up into like really fine powdery leather and do the same sort of process to the wheel so apply a glue or an epoxy of a sort and then flock it. But instead of using flocking stuff, I'm gonna use leather powder. And if it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't, then I'm back to square one anyways. So that's basically my plan. I'm gonna try to cut this up, grind this up. I'm gonna try a couple different methods, whatever works best for me. And then hopefully I'll have enough of this material to cover this. So that's the first step. So stand by. I gotta take it easy.
So <clears throat> the scraping and the shaving and all that stuff was going kind of slow. I mean, we could have done it. It, it would have just taken forever. So we decided to get the blender out. And uh, will it blend? Yes, it will. So as you can see, here's the results at first. It's uh, definitely breaking it down into a very fine, coarse material. I think this kind of stuff will work for us. This is what the shaving produced. Uh, as you can see, it's very, very fine. Um, so I think that we're gonna go ahead and go with this process. I'll cut out most of this because it's gonna take a while to get it down into uh, smaller chunks than this, obviously, into something more like that. So I'm gonna cut all this out and I'll cut back when we've got our finished results. All right. All right, guys, so here's the setup I have. Um, I was able to, after some tedious work, I'm not sure if it took longer than I expected or shorter than I expected. I don't know if you've ever felt that way before. Uh, if you go into something like, you, you think it's gonna go real quick, and then all of a sudden you quickly realize that it's gonna take much fucking longer than you thought. And you know, you start, and then you find a good way to, to, to solve that problem. And uh, you know, it goes a lot faster then. So I don't know. It, it took a long time, but I feel like it could have taken a lot longer. Um, uh, I would say probably a good hour and a half of just like blending. I mean, like going at it with the blender, picking out big pieces, trying to sort it out. Um, so this is what I ended up with. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's it's pretty fine. I mean, it's it's definitely a fine mixture. It's just not like a powder. It's not like a, uh, I mean, it's, it's powdery. It's very fine. It's like uh, down almost. But it's not like, it's obviously not like, like you'd get if you were gonna be doing um, actual flocking. That stuff's like, you can almost like shake it out of a shaker. It's That's how fine it is. So I've got my setup here. Okay, it's kind of funny. Um, I've got like a rotisserie. I've got all this taped off. I've got a little chuck on here. Um, and I'm gonna basically try to rotate this to keep, keep the epoxy as even as possible. Before I do anything, I'm gonna put the epoxy on these three spokes here. And then I'm just gonna start like laying it on the wheel. Hopefully it levels out fairly decently. Then I'm gonna start spinning it and just kind of dumping the, the stuff on. I got basically it's like fiberglass resin. It's polyester resin. This stuff works, I've worked with it pretty, uh, I've worked with it before in the past. Unfortunately, everything is in Japanese, even the measurements and everything like that, um, which is kind of good because it's all metric, so it's not like terribly hard to measure. Um, but I know this is 101, so I've basically got to measure out of my resin. I'm gonna try to get away with doing about half of this. I think that probably might be more than enough, probably a lot more than I need. So I might do one tray, this is about one cup, Worth. There's about four cups in here. Not, you know, not exactly, but I'm gonna try to get this right. Uh, hopefully, I don't fuck myself over and the, the resin doesn't like harden up before I finish this process. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try to fast forward through most of this and wish me luck. Thank you. 
All right, so last night I applied some resin to the wheel. I set up a little rotisserie thing with my drill and kind of jerry rigged it so it would spin um, on its own. Applied some resin, and as you guys know, or if you've ever worked with fiberglass resin before, once things start to get out of hand, they can get out of hand pretty quickly. So I kind of made the mistake. I was thinking I was gonna put some resin on the little um, the the spokes first. And then I rethought that quickly after I realized how much of a mess it was going to make. So I tried to wipe off as much as possible, started to redo the resin on the wheel. And uh, it kind of snowballed out, of there, out from there. And pretty quickly I realized it wasn't going to go as smoothly as I thought. So I set it out as soon as I was done. I set it outside. Uh, so let's see what we've got. <laughs> So as you can see, it's like it's like a little 1970s furry fuzzy wheel. Um, I'm hoping though that underneath all this fur, um, there's maybe a decent layer of leather that's probably being pretty optimistic. At the end of the day though, if I end up with a piece of crap that I can't use, then I really still came out ahead because I got the, the nardy button and I got the hub. So I'd say in my book that's worth 30 bucks. So if I can't save this wheel, I can't save this wheel. But uh, let's see if we can get a little close up of some of the, the gnarliness. <laughs> so I think the biggest problem with this is that I had too many big chunks of leather left that uh, I didn't get a fine enough material. Um, I don't know. This is probably going to look even crappier than my wrap job. So let's take it inside and see if I can clean this up. All right, guys, so I've worked on this thing for maybe 10 minutes. I'm not quite sure. Um, basically, lesson learned. Um, I think it's kind of funny. It turned out ridiculous. It is, I don't know what I was expecting now that I think back on it. I thought it was going to come out a lot better. I thought that it should work for sure or that there'd be like some way. But like, honestly, there's just no way to get the... I think the reason why flocking works is because the particles are so fine that only a certain amount sticks to the resin or whatever they use, the glue. The problem with the leather pieces is that I, I don't know how you would get the leather any finer than I got it. And then it's not really a material that can be like shaked out of something. It literally clumps together, it's, it's like down, and the only way to apply it is to drop it or like you know patter it on the surface and in effect that creates lots of clumps of material like this and uh, yeah that definitely does not work so at the end of the day you have some areas with uh, you know high spots some with low I thought that you know I don't know what I thought I thought it would come out great or at least better than this initially uh, but as soon as I started applying the leather, as I was like applying the resin, I realized it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna work out so well. So you can see that like, I would be able to get it down in some areas, and actually looks pretty good in some spots, but the spots where it stuck. But then you can see that like other areas, the resin was a little bit higher, or the pieces 
got more resin than others and it just did not work out so that you know a fail but i learned something and uh you know that's the price you pay i got this wheel you know if i if i count the button and i count the uh the hub as a you know a plus the wheel pretty much got that for free so you know i wasn't any further ahead than i'm not any further ahead or behind than i was before the wheel like i said the leather was in destroyed condition it was literally cracked through and through all the way down to the material here so you know not really salvageable at this point i could probably spend a bunch of hours and clean this up and get it back to the point where it's uh back to the base material but you know I think for the amount of time that it would take to, to recover one of these, even if you were using real leather and you took it to a, like an upholstery shop, at the end of the day, you can get a new wheel for like 150 bucks or something like that. Uh, at least used or, you know, they're not that expensive. So for the amount of time that it would take, I'm going to say probably just get yourself a new wheel. <laughs> so, you know, lesson learned. I appreciate it if you followed all the way through the video. Uh, sorry the results are subpar, um, but now you know. Can you flock a wheel in leather? No. But can you blend leather? Oh, hell yeah, you can. So, hopefully we've all taken a little bit of knowledge away from this. <laughs> uh, I'll catch you guys in another video. Uh, maybe more weird projects in the future. Maybe I'll use this wheel for something else. Maybe I'll turn it into something crazy. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe for more weird and uh, kind of DIY or, you know, basically trying to cheap out and get my money's worth on all this shit. So, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, stay tuned for more, and uh, leave a like, share with a friend. All that stuff really helps the channel grow. Um, I'm seeing a lot of positive comments, and that really inspires me to make more videos. So, the more of that, the more videos to come. So, thanks for watching. Take it